friends uh, honorable supreme court of india has passed a judgment on 3rd of uh, july 2024 in the criminal appeal number 597 of 2012 appeal in versus state and city of delhi uh, we have already made a video in hindi versions and many uh, viewers has suggested that we should also made uh, videos in english language as they are not very much conversant with the hindi language so we, this video is made especially for those viewers who are not well versed with the english language sorry the hindi language so here what happens there in this case we will just first discuss about the facts of this case the appellant who worked as a uh, police uh, guard there in uh, one of the uh, police station located at delhi and he was accused of uh, killing a man in in the police station and uh, uh, so he was charged under the the provisions of indian penal code 302 and 307 and uh, the trial court has convicted him and sentenced for the life imprisonment and he aggravated against the order he filed a uh, appeal there before the high court high court too has rejected his appeal finally the matter went uh, to the honorable supreme court of india in this judgment honorable supreme court of india has discussed a very uh, big uh, one prominent thing that the cross examination should not be deferred uh, suppose if the an individual who has been uh, 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 means uh, he has already deposed his uh, examination in chief before the honorable court so his ex- uh, cross examination should be done preferably either on the same date or in, or very shortly and it should not be given any long uh, the defense should not be given any long adjournment because there is a high possibility of uh, uh, endangering the life of the witness so in the absence of the cross examination the uh, as we as we are very well know that in the absence of the cross examination the uh, the evidence will uh, shall not be treated as a complete evidence so the honorable supreme court of india has the uh, has made an observation that uh, that the the cross examination should not be deferred for long period of time and uh, finally the honorable supreme court of india means uh, they have upheld the order of the honorable high court as the testimonies of the uh, key witnesses including the eye witnesses were found to be uh, credible and defense has raised a story that uh, he has uh, acted I- either in the private defense or in the private defense should not be accepted that or he should be prosecuted only for the crime culpable of homicide and not amounted to the murder but uh, the honorable supreme court has found out in their find that um, found that uh, the defense fails to raise any substantial explanation there in this in the evidence or neither he could produce any uh, any evidence which which can prove the his version so the prosecution as uh, evidence is finally get accepted and the trial court the version of the trial court and the honorable high court uh, get upheld and finally the appeal get dismissed so let's see what's there in the judgment let's we continue with this step by step what's happened there and they say so it, this judgment clearly speaks that uh, the appellant who challenged the order of the high court of 18th of uh, of 2011 dismissed this appeal which means upholding the conviction and sentence passed by the trial court under 307 302 and of 307 of indian penal code 302 is the punishment for the uh, murder 307 is the attempt uh, for means uh, of the indian penal code which has been sentenced for life imprisonment and seven years regular imprisonment so respectively so two charges were framed and uh, uh, the conviction upheld by the honorable high court as well as the trial court so uh, this is the facts case there that the murder took place in the one of the two at one of the police station located in the delhi and uh, the prosecution is uh, case is that the appellant who worked as a police guard in so and so police station delhi so he executed a murder there in the police station and uh, the deceased was married to his appellant first cousin who is was also his, his neighbor means that that's the person who was killed by the appellant in fact he was there some way relative to the appellant because his first cousin was valid there was 
married to him so and he was also staying in the neighbor the prosecution stated is that that deceased has some illicit relationship with the wife of the appellant so this is the one of the motive of uh, killing by the appellant so prosecution made a story that uh, means uh, the wife of the appellant has some uh, means illicit relationship with the appellant so there are more run witnesses of the fact that appellant was last seen together in conversation inside the police station even before the uh appellant uh, killed the deceased with his official 9 mm carbine so the fir was lodged as the uh, police station under on 30th of june 2022 at 2:30 pm under sections 302 307 of the code on the narration of pw2 of uh, it's pw2 is the is a cons is a head constable is a lady head constable who was posted at the police station and uh, it uh, in the judgment we will see that she arrived late in the police station because she has some work there at home she arrived but when she arrived at the police station she saw that appellant was uh, having a conversation with the deceased so so this is the pw2 is the main uh, eye witness as well as the complainant so she also got to hurt there uh, during the incident uh, when the incident took place and uh, at 11:40 pm she heard some sounds of the fire and she she saw the deceased running towards the duty officer's room and uh, he was bleeding with his hand up held up in the air the appellant was seen firing the deceased from his carbine when the firing stopped the deceased was seen lying outside the uh, uh, duty officer's room bleeding profusely so uh, this was the version this was a statement given by the pw2 when she arrived there she the appellant was having the conversation with the deceased and when he she heard the sounds he found she found that uh the deceased was running towards the uh police duty room with his hands upwards and he was bleeding profusely means uh, uh, a lot of blood has been coming out from his body the police after the people to was also injured in the firing and when she was taken to lbs hospital and later lost the fire so she took also received some uh, means uh, injuries palate injury or blood injury whatsoever we don't i don't know she has only mentioned that injured in the fire and uh, the police after investigations filed a charge sheet and she tried the case was committed to the station where the charges were framed under 302 307 of the case so prosecution examined as 27 witnesses and uh, finally the accused was also examined under 313 and he also lead his witness as a defense witness means he also chose to uh, he has chosen to appear in the witness box and he deposed himself as a witness so he was marked as a dw1 so before 313 examination first the 313 examination was completed in which the uh, uh, defendant the means the accused has to give a statement without oath and under dw1 the oath under when he attended a witness examination there in the witness house he will have should certainly have given uh, have a statement under oath so finally the trial court convicted him and sentenced to 302 307 and in penal court and uh, If the PW6 is the brother of the appellant and PW25 is the wife of the appellant, she they also supported the prosecution. But they say is in the testimony that deceased was having the matter uh, extra marital affair with the appellant wife, and both of them have added that deceased was who was determined to kill the appellant. It means they have made this version that it was not the appellant who wants to kill the defendant, the, the, the deceased. It's the deceased who was who wanted to kill the. appellant so pw25 is the wife of appellant says in the manus prior to the incident the deceased has come to her place and warned her that he was going to the police station to kill her husband so means her wife to have made the statement that it was the deceased who first visited to his uh, to visit to her house and he warned her that he is going to the police station to kill his husband so pw6 is the witness of the expression on the part of the deceased so so this was the statements given and uh, testimony was also reproduced here now we come to the main portion the main portion so finally they says that uh, and it, it says in the judgment of pw2 who is the lady head constable she deposed himself in the witness box she was 
put to the lengthy cross examination by the defense. The cross examination defense made every possible attempt to cast doubt on the presence of witness in the police station. But this was all vain. Since there was no uh, more than one witness in the case, clearly established the presence of PW2 in the police station. So uh, the defense raised means through the cross examination, uh, the defense made all her all their efforts to shaken the credibility of the witness but the court says it's all got vain because another witnesses was there who supports that pw2 was present inside the police station when they are the event took place when the murder took place and uh, medical examination was also being conducted because she too got injured there during this incident. so medical examination was also conducted on the same day. This was the report. Is this she has a lacerated wound to into two centimeter over the left shoulder and la la near lateral end of the clavicle. This clavicle is the bone there. Laterate, a lacerated wound left shoulder posterior at lateral end of the clavicle three into three centimeter fresh oozing of the blood. So PW, there are many more witnesses there. The PW11 is the head constable. PW2 is the uh, who took to the PW2 to the LBS hospital and testified before the court. In this regard, PW27 uh, is the SHO of the police station. So there are many witnesses are there who support the version of the prosecution. And in the examination chief, PW says that on 30th June 2002, she was police posted at the police station, and she uh, she, she used to uh, was to work as a duty officer at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. But she has some personal work in the morning and she took prior permission to the, from the SHO to arrive late. So she arrived here at 11.35 a.m. and she gave, she saw the appealant uh, who was posted as a guard in the same police station talking to the stranger and near end of the premises. She found that the appealant was busy and that appealant was busy and was engaged in the talking with the stranger, uh, stranger deceased. Uh, who was uh, uh, killed by, who was allegedly killed by the uh, appearant. So, and then she says she saw the person from the uh, appearant having a conversation, rushing towards the doctors, sorry, the duties to, uh, officers doing with hands up in the air and she was bleeding. She also saw the constable so -so chasing the person from behind. So, this was her version which she has narrated in the examination chief that the deceased were running towards the Duty officers who and it's the appellant was chasing him, and uh, he was uh, appellant was holding the 9 mm carbine aiming at the deceased. So all three, uh, all other police of or the personnel had constable, constable another, and the HG. They bent down and took shield in order to avoid straight She saw the deceased lying uh, outside the room, really bleeding profusely. And she realized uh, that uh, she too has received bullet injuries in the left shoulder and she was taken to the LBS hospital. So, so same things were repeated here. So defense did not cross examine the witness immediately. So this, is, this was the observation which was made by this honorable court that when she testified herself in the, as an examination chief, the defense did not cross examine on the same day. But sought the cross examination to be deferred, which was done, and she was cross examined only on 30th of 11, 2004, which is more than two months after the examination. She means, so we say, just stop here for a while, only to sound a note of caution. Such long adjournment was given in this case after the examination chief should never have been given. Reasons are there, but main reason is that this may affect the fairness of the trial and may even endanger in given case the safety of the witness as far as possible the defense should be asked to cross-examine the witness uh, the same day or the following day only very exceptional cases are the for the reasons to be recorded the cross-examination should be deferred and a short adjournment can be given after taking pre precautions as care for the witness if so required the court has made a uh, very strict observation that cross-examination should not be deferred if the person deposed him, uh, himself or herself in the witness box it means uh, she deposed herself as an examination chief that and the uh, efforts must be taken that the cross examination should be done either on the same date or on the following date or on the next day. And only in court have further help that we in, in very exceptional cases that the, the, the cross examination should be deferred. So it's not only on the means the will of the uh, means the defense or, or or just for the convenience of the defense, but on the basis on the discretion of the 
the trial court and this discussion must be judicially explained or the reason must be recorded why adjournment is needs to be solved for the examining the witness because courts may have made a cautious that it will affect the uh, means the care which will affect the, uh, the life of the witnesses also some because some sensitive witnesses are there if people start taking long adjournments so definitely the life of the witness key witnesses may get jeopardized because once the cross examination could not be done so evidence will be treated to be as an incomplete so the court has one occasion condemned the practice uh, where the examinations were deferred without sufficient reasons so this was the previous judgment which has already been come there state of up versus shabunda singh but some big covers are so forth these were the judgments there and this reasons are must to be recorded under sub section 2 of sub uh, section 231 of cpc because not the observation of the court but law is also been made there so this if you see the section 231 of the code of criminal procedure uh 231 sub part 2 says the judge may in its discretion permit the cross examination of any witnesses to be deferred until any other witness or witness have been examined or recall any witnesses for further a cross examination so says it's only in the discretion of the judge not on these uh, means the convenience of the advocates or the convenience of the defense so the in its discretion permits the uh, cross examination to be deferred until uh, any other witness have been examined or recall any other witnesses so it's only in the discretion of the court they are the judge who is presiding officer of the court so this was the law has already been made there so other witnesses has also deposed post mortem was done so that these versions remained unchallenged and finally the version was that the burden of the proof the court says section 105 bring in evidence act says the burden of the proof the accused case falls in the general exceptions upon the accused himself so this section says suppose if accused wants some kind of a uh, means uh, means uh, he wants uh, that uh, uh, he has acted in its self defense or some he he is claiming some exceptions so onus also lies on him to prove why he has taken this such kind of a step so so burden of the proof lies on the accused if he pleading he will see uh pleading some exceptions there uh, which is there which is which are the part of some chapter there in the indian penal code say he has acted in a private defense it's the court says the less the accused to be proved that why he has acted in this act under what circumstances he has to be taken this kind of a step so this was the Uh, it means uh, section of the of five speaks uh, speaks about this and the uh, self defense taken by the plain is childish to say that in the light of the facts says on the date of the evidence the case of defense that the uh, deceased came to police station unarmed to kill the appellant knowing well the appellant was armed with the weapon is an awkward attempt to present the deceased as an aggressor so this court says why the deceased has approached to the police station unarmed when well, he well knows that uh, the appellant Uh, means uh, who worked as a police guard uh, posted there in the police station must be armed there with weapon so why he has been come there in arms on a surely lies on the uh, the uh, means of appeal and defend to prove why he uh, that why he has acted in how in what circumstances he has acted in that self defense the courts too has said it it doesn't make any sense so i witnesses also says that uh, appeal did not stop initially firing the shot but He has fired at close range entry wound of the gun shot with the blackening. The court once found that he, he not only act, uh, killed the uh, def- uh, the deceased, but he also acting in a very close range because the wound is covered by the blackening. This is, uh, suppose uh, someone hits them at a very close range, so there must be a blackening uh, comes out near the wound. So it suggests that uh, he was being killed. I mean, he was being attacked. He was being fired. at the very short range so court has rejected this version and uh, and uh, the onus also lies on him and as far as exception is concerned the court says this is not amounting to a murder but he has to prove the exception by uh, means uh, and uh, means why he has to uh, means uh, acted why why he uh, get, why he get killed the uh, uh, the deceased uh, on the under circumstances he has to explain so it is it suppose if he is claiming any exceptions there so court has retracted one more cases in km nanamati versus state of maharashtra so this was a very old judgment so we need not have to go on into the fact means uh facts of this case the court has reproduced certain paragraphs of that judgment 
and uh, in the present case every possible count is case is nothing but the case of the murder the nature of the weapon used the number of the guard shots fired at the deceased and the part of the body where the guard gun shots are fired all points towards the fact that people were determined to kill the deceased the court has rejected that he that from any angle this uh, the version that exception 1 of the section 300 cannot be invoked because uh, number of the guns shot by the deceased the part of the body we there he has filed and the nature of the weapon he has used these are the factors which has to be taken into consideration that the court finally has as found that it was a case of a murder but there is not a case of a culpable homicide in order murder or and rejected these stories of the the uh, the appellant so court says by no stretch of the logic uh, or or it's a case of any magnitude that's definitely not culpable homicide in order murder or murder the present case in the court says is not even remotely being made out so that uh, if he must for taking any exceptions under one of uh, section 3 and of Indian penal code so court says we are not inclined to interfere in the findings of the trial court as well as the high court so appeal is hereby dismissed and uh, he has been further directed to surrender before the trial court within the period of uh, four weeks from today a copy of the judgment shall be sent to the trial court to ensure that that the appellant surrenders and undergoes remaining part of the sentence so this was the judgment which came on 3rd of june july 2024 ummeed hai ki yah video aapko pasand aaya hoga agar aapne abhi tak hamare channel ko subscribe nahi kiya hai to kripya ise subscribe kar le aur bell icon daba kar notification prapt kare taki aap hamare naye video se update reh sake agar aapko yah video pasand aaya ho to kripya like kare और अपने दोस्तों के साथ शेयर करें हमारे चैनल पर आपको न्यायिक मुद्दों कानूनी सलाह और कानूनी अपडेट्स के बारे में नवाचारिक और महत्वपूर्ण जानकारी मिलेगी हमारे साथ बने रहें क्योंकि योगेश महाजन लीगल आपके कानूनी सवालों का सहायक है